everybody. Welcome back to Bobcat TV from inside Bobcat TV studios. I'm Paul T with Voice of the Bobcats, joined by a very, very special guest today, former Bobcat goaltender and reigning National Division I college hockey champion Hunter Shepard is with us. Chef, how's it going, bud? Not bad, not bad. It's been uh, pretty wild the last couple of months. Things are starting to settle down, so it's it's been good. And it has been a couple months. Has it set it? Has it sunk in? Have you actually had the chance now to kind of sit down and say, wow, that happened? Yeah, I mean, a little bit. I think you just think about it, and uh, it's pretty crazy. I mean, still standing during the national anthem after the starting lineups, is, it, didn't, it still doesn't feel real. Like <laughs> you to, it's pretty crazy, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's starting to sink in a little bit, and it's, it's some crazy stuff. Now, I want to go back to that last faceoff because it was the second game in a row that that happened where they said, wait, there's a second left on the clock. I know you said it's kind of a blur. What do you remember of that faceoff and then the celebration that had to be reset? You kind of got Hermantown a little bit on that one. What do you remember? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I just... The last thing I wanted to do was loosen my gloves up and stuff before the face off because then you're just asking for trouble. But uh, I don't know, the, the buzzer went off and I just threw my stick and I, I, it wasn't planned or anything. I just kind of went to the corner and jumped on the boards and almost hurt myself. So <laughs> I was, yeah, I don't know, it was so crazy. I think you could, just couldn't control really what you were doing. So it was, it was pretty fun. Now, I mean, everybody who watched the college hockey tournament knows that you guys had a young team. I don't think that you could go about 20 seconds in the broadcast of any of that without hearing about how young the Bulldogs were this year. Was that kind of a rallying point for you guys after a while? Uh, I think it was, but, I mean, you look at it, about half of those freshmen were on the World Junior team, so it didn't, like, lack in talent at all, which was nice. I mean, about halfway through the year, a lot of those guys kind of caught their stride, and it I mean, they didn't play like freshmen, and that was pretty obvious watching them on TV, uh, how well they handled it and stuff. So uh, I don't, I mean, at the same point, yeah, I mean, maybe a little bit, because we were probably a little bit of the underdogs, which we didn't think we were, but I mean, obviously everybody else did. Uh, but they didn't play like freshmen. So I mean, for us, yes and no, but uh, I mean, their talent helped us a ton. I mean, without those 10 guys, we, we wouldn't have been there, so. You, you know, you and I have talked and you say a lot, you know, about halfway through the year, halfway through the years when things change. Was there a specific turning point where things really clicked for you guys? Um, I think it was probably the Christmas tournament out at Dartmouth. Uh, I mean, we were missing all those World Junior guys and we had three, four, five guys in the lineup that really didn't probably play a ton throughout the year. and. Uh, to beat Yale and then beat Dartmouth in a shootout and with basically, I mean, it felt like a, a youth hockey tournament where you're going up to Rosa or something with only 13, 14 guys. That's what it felt like because we had four defensemen for both games. And so uh, I think that just to kind of show the character we had in our locker room, that was the first time it probably really came out during the year. And second half, I mean, we just kind of rolled, so it's good. Um, one moment that really struck me was seeing you and Avery Peterson, that hug that uh, so many pictures and so many videos of that. What was that moment like for you to share that with someone that you played hockey with growing up for so long? Uh, it's pretty crazy. I mean, growing up in, in youth hockey, we lost the state championship in Peewees and Bantams, and then we lost by our goal to go to the state tournament when, when we were juniors. So, I mean, been really close doing a lot of things and then when he went to Omaha I didn't figure we'd ever get to play together again and then my first year at UMD like I didn't play much and he didn't play the first half of the year and not thinking you might ever get a chance to get back to the national championship and then even though he didn't he didn't get the, the chance to play and that's I mean that was every hockey memory I have besides in Bismarck was or sports memory in general because we played baseball together too was with him so it was pretty special. No question about that. So now looking ahead, it was a young team, but obviously this weekend's NHL draft might have a little bit to say about what next year's team's going to look like. Obviously losing some huge seniors as well. What's the outlook now for the Bulldogs? Uh, good. I mean, <laughs> I've, you, you'd think, I mean, cause everybody, I think most people thought it was going to be a rebuilding year for us and, and the job that the coaching staff and did in recruiting and getting the guys that we got, it was... I mean, we didn't feel like it was a, a rebuilding year. Obviously, we showed that. So, uh, I mean, we don't lose a ton of guys, and we got 
all of our defensemen coming back. So I mean, uh, we, things things look good. <laughs> things look good. So hopefully we can, we can keep it together and have another good season next year. Now you are back in town right now for the McQuaid softball tournament. It, it's pretty cool. It's got to be fun to come back and uh, have a little fun here and not necessarily be in like because I you and I talk about it a lot about how when you're in the season and when you're playing your mindset's a lot different. So being able to come back here uh, on a little bit more of a fun note, pretty cool. Yeah, it's. Uh, this is like a second home to me. Like my two years in uh, Bismarck probably had more of an impact on my life than any other time. I mean, uh, to get here and come to work with Lane and get so close with you guys, where they asked me to come out and do, do, uh, do this weekend with them, is uh, it's pretty special. I mean, uh, besides going home to Grand Rapids, like this is like home besides Duluth. So uh, I love coming out here. All right, one last question. I th- I, I've asked you this on the coaches' show before, but I want to uh, have all of our Bobcat TV fans hear this as well. What is your favorite memory from when you played here in Bismarck with the Bobcats? Uh, there's a lot of them. I mean, probably on the ice was obviously winning the, the Central Cup and getting to go to uh, the, the Robertson Cup in Edina. Uh, besides that, I mean, the hunting and fishing stars, I could probably tell you, with Harrison and Lane and Strando and Hurt and those guys are... Uh, Pressure tall on there. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, we'll we'll keep we'll keep those off of camera. But Shep, thanks a lot, and congrats again, bud, and good luck uh, this summer, uh, whatever it may bring you. Yeah, thank you. All right, Bobcat fans, that is a former Bobcat goaltender Hunter Shepard, national champion with the University of Minnesota Duluth Bulldogs here this year. Uh, stay tuned for all sorts of fun here this summer. Uh, good luck to all the softball players uh, here this weekend at the McQuaid Tournament, and stick with us here on Bobcat TV.